some of you may remember these three filing cabinets that I bought from an auction a few months back. In October, I took two of them and put them together, cut up an old tabletop, and added a base and wheels to make my own cart for my laser. This offered me a very sturdy spot to hold the laser because it is fairly heavy, but it also gave me a ton of storage room for all the laser supplies. On those two, I opted to do something very simple color-wise. I wanted it light so that the dust wouldn't show, and I used the original hardware because there was enough of them. But this one piece that was left over, I want to do something completely different, and that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. As far as the hardware goes, there was one knob missing, of course, and the base was pretty bad. It looked like it had gotten damp at some point and the MDF base had swollen, and anyway, I'm going to have to remove that. But thankfully, I kept the bases from the other two cabinets that I made my laser table out of, so I'm going to be doing a little switcheroo. I love working on these Bombay cabinets, and to me, this is the perfect piece to experiment with paint on. I'm actually going to be adding veneer to this, parts of it, painting it a much darker color than my laser table, and trying to come up with a bit of a dark academia inspired look, so stay tuned. My name is Angie and I refinish furniture. Sometimes I paint and sometimes I don't, but I always do what I can to save old pieces from the trash. Welcome to my workroom. All right, so the last thing I wanted to do for this video was to be on camera. I've had a rough week. <laughs> I've got breakouts on my face. I'm a little annoyed that um, I'm having to do this, but here's the deal. Normally when I finish with an SD card, it goes in that little jar. I lost the SD card somewhere, I don't know where, um, with about the first third of this video uh, footage. I've looked everywhere. Um, it has vanished, <laughs> I can't explain it. So basically what that means for this video is I can't show you the beginning of this where I took it apart, cleaned it, sanded it down, wiped it again, and did my first two coats of paint. What's going on here? This is not a good day to be on camera. Anyway, oh my gosh. The other thing that is not going to be shown is me removing the base. But if you go back to the video I did a few weeks ago, where I did the other two, um, you can see how I removed the bases on that one. What else was on that first SD card? Oh, I had to remove the base from the first one because it was shot. But thankfully, I kept the bases from the two that I did a few weeks ago because I was able to use one of them on this. It was in much better shape, so I just swapped them out. Anyway, I'm sorry this took so long to explain, but that's why the first probably 15 minutes of the video doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm going to pick up where the second SD card is, and thanks for watching anyway. <laughs> so I'm going to be using my laser, which is an X-Tool P2 to cut through some veneer to put on the face of this cabinet. Instead of just having it all one painted color like the last one, I want this to have a two-tone look and definitely wanted to bring some warmth from the wood grain in. So I have some walnut veneer in here, I have it set to specific measurements, I can even cut out for the keyhole escutcheon and the two little holes for the hardware, and basically just so the laser do its job. Now you could definitely have done this by hand using um, a knife or something like that. This was way faster and more accurate, especially with cutting out those keyhole escutcheons. So I'm finding that this laser, this tool has been quite valuable so far in my furniture business. Once I have all my veneer cut, eight with keyhole escutcheons and eight without, I'm going to do my color treatment. So this is the little test sample that I made up. Basically all it is is some Odie's oil on the veneer covered in some black wax. Uh, I don't even know if Michael still sells this. I bought this about five years ago, but I'm assuming you could use probably any black wax. I just applied the Odie Super Duper Everlasting Oil, let it soak in for a little bit and then buffed it off. And then once that was dry, it went in with some black wax to deepen the color. I 
Now this is gonna look a little scary at first, don't be alarmed. This is the black wax. Not only is this going to deepen the color, but the real reason I wanted to use the black wax is so that I could buff parts of it off. And you'll see what I mean by that. First, I'm going to very gently remove the bulk of it. Wax tends to set up fairly quickly. So if you're doing things in circles, you wanna make sure you smooth it out by going back and forth fairly quickly. Be careful of fingerprints. So once I have most of this off, I'm gonna go really aggressively here in the center. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna remove more wax there and give it a bit of a aged or worn look. Right here in the center is right underneath the new poles that I'm putting on, so it would be as if someone's hand had touched that spot a million times, and it's a little bit hard to see here in this lighting, but you'll see that effect a little bit better later on. This color was one of Fusion Mineral Paint's newest releases, and it's a dark gray. It's not quite like Ash. You'll see Ash has a bit more of a blue tint to it, and it's not quite black. It's just a really beautiful, deep, deep charcoal gray. As I mentioned, unfortunately, I missed the whole first section of this video, but this is where it's picked up. After cleaning and lightly scuff sanding this, I went and put three coats of this paint on, and now I'm ready to apply these veneer. This is walnut veneer with a 3M backing. So on the back of it, there is a plastic sheet. You peel it off and it exposes the adhesive. So this is gonna stick right down onto the cabinet. Super easy, I don't have to worry about glue squeezing out everywhere, but you'll see it raised up here a little bit in this corner. That is because each of these squares is a slightly, slightly different measurement, like less than a millimeter off. It was a small enough amount that I opted to cut all of these the same size and just slightly trim up the ones that I had to. You do have a little bit of work time with this stuff. You can see on this one I had to peel it back up and stick it back down. You don't want to do that probably more than once though because you want the adhesive to stay as sticky as possible. So in this corner here all I'm doing is just trimming the slightest little shaving off there and that fits in nicely now. So over top of the paint, I'm using the Fusion Beeswax Hemp Oil Combo, and I'm going to go right over top of the wood as well. Fusion has a built-in top coat. You don't really have to do this. I'm doing this because I like to deepen the color a bit. So if you remember what I started with here, the base had to be replaced and didn't want to just paint the new base. So what I'm opting to do is use some of this larger veneer and I'm going to wrap the base in walnut veneer as well. So this is one of the leftover bases from the other two cabinets, as I mentioned. I'm just gonna measure and cut out for that and attach that as well. And of course my pen does not want to work. You may be wondering why I'm not cutting the veneer here with a knife, and the reason is I'm cutting it a little bit oversized. I'm willing to bet that the base isn't uniform the whole way around, so if I cut it a little bit larger, then I can go up and trim it later on. So first I'm going to attach it with all four sides overlapping a little bit. And then once that's adhered, I can go in and trim it. I'm only shaving little bits off at a time, especially on the corners, because it's really easy to take too much off too quickly. Just little shavings, taking my time. 
Once I have that good, I'm going to burnish the edge a little bit. Trim up the other side and then I can sand. And when I'm sanding, I'm actually going right around the corner and that gives this a very smooth look. And then I'm going to apply the OD Super Duper Everlasting Oil and Black Wax here, just like I did on the front. Now, I mean, it's all personal preference, but to me this looks a lot nicer than, I think, a painted base would. Eventually I get that all sorted out and it's time to reattach the base. So I have the cabinet upside down and I'm just putting this back on the same way it would have been on before. So the only thing with <laughs> switching out the hardware is that the keyhole escutcheons are a different color. So I'm using some rub and buff, which is like a metallic wax to kind of bring the two closer together. The pulls themselves have a bit of a mottled sort of tarnished look, so that's what I'm going for on the keyhole escutcheons as well. And I think this worked perfectly. I'm using a little bit of the same color on the hardware itself. You can see here just a couple little dabs and it's just going to help marry the two together a little bit even more. Now at the beginning you heard me mention something called dark academia. This is not a new decorating style or decor style by any means, but we're definitely seeing a resurgence in it. This is a style that pulls inspiration from old universities and libraries, dark colors, arts, museums. So that's kind of where I'm pulling inspiration for this piece from. In this envelope are all of the Amazon wishlist gift receipts that people have sent me over the last two and a half years. And I want to do something permanent with these. So I am picking inspiration here from this fan deck. I'm going to be using some walnut ply and making a way to store these. I don't want to lose any of them and I don't want them to get damaged. So I thought this would be a fun thing to do. I used the laser to engrave what I thought was a really nice quote on it, put my logo on the bottom and a hole at the top for the pin. Walnut so dark that I wanted the lettering to stand out a bit more, so I added some black Saman water-based stain, pressed it into the engraving, and then wiped some of it back, and this is what I'm left with. I'm gonna be running four of these through per page, and if you're thinking, oh my gosh, you're wasting half the sheet, I actually make cards and clear acetate is something I use all the time, so I'm just going to use the scraps for card making. Once I had them all done, this is what it looks like. Um, I ended up putting a smaller pin in, <laughs> the other one was just way too long for now, but I like that I can change it up down the road. And now I have all of these to remember. Now because this is thermal paper, some of it did darken when it went through the laminator, but all of it is still readable. I love how this turned out and it's just another cool thing that I've been able to make with the laser. So today's project, obviously, I used it to cut out the fronts, but I've also done things like make custom knobs for old radios that I couldn't find anymore. I made this custom candle base for these old sconces that were salvaged from an old house. I've made coasters, so many coasters, <laughs> for myself and also for the Buddy Rescue to sell at their events for fundraising. And I also made a ton of adorable little bunny ornaments that we also sold for the rescue. 
If you've ever considered getting yourself a laser, X-Tool has a Christmas sale on now until December 26, 2023. I will drop some links down below so you can check that out if you like. So having a look back now at what I started with, this <laughs> ugly scratched up, very typical filing cabinet that I got at an auction has a completely different look now. I love that I had three all together because I was able to show you guys two very different looks. For my laser table, as you remember, I went very light because I didn't want to show a lot of dust. And I did have all the original hardware, so that's what I kept for that one. But for this one, well, let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.